Hi everyone, welcome back to the Strawberry Loli channel. This is your friendly neighborhood Slytherin Ren. Today I'm going to be testing out and reviewing the Shuemura and Sadaharu Aoki collection. Probably the most highly anticipated Japanese makeup release of the year. I don't know, I may be biased. Sadaharu Aoki is a highly acclaimed Japanese pastry chef who is based out of Paris, France. He has two boutiques in Tokyo as well, one of which is in the Isetan department store in Shinjuku, which is actually pretty close to where I live. In fact, I passed by that department store on my commute home from work every day. I was actually hoping to pick up a little cake or pastry from the Sadaharu Aoki patisserie stand itself on Friday, yesterday, just so I could flex a little bit, like, you know, eating my gourmet matcha cake while applying matcha-themed eyeshadow to my eyes. I feel like it would have been the biggest stunt ever on the makeup community on YouTube. But to be honest with you guys, I was just so exhausted after work on Friday that I went home and slept for like 20 hours. I have eaten eaten stuff from Sadaharu Aoki before though. I might actually have footage on my hard drive somewhere of me eating one of his cakes or at least a picture of the cake. If I can find it, I will insert it in this video. Back to the topic at hand though, I purchased three items from this collection. So I got the Matcha Genoise eye palette and one of their limited edition Rouge Unlimited Matte Lipstick Shades exclusive to this collection called Mikan Ginger as well as their Petal 55 Foundation Brush again in this hot pink striped limited edition Sadaharu Aoki design. I've decided not to review the foundation brush in this video because the Petal 55 is actually part of Shuamura's original makeup tools lineup. You can purchase it anytime in the original black packaging so the only different thing this time around is this special handle. They typically re-release this brush every time they do a collaboration in a special exclusive design for that particular collection, but the actual brush itself is a permanent item. So I think I want to do a separate designated video on this just because I kind of want to go into more depth about the history and craftsmanship of the brush itself, the special handmade construction process that goes into it by actual skilled uh, Japanese brush artisans, all of that good stuff. So yeah, we'll save that for another occasion. But for today, we're just going to focus on the eyeshadow palette as well as the one lipstick that I picked up. Both eyeshadow palettes from this collection were designed in Japan and made in Korea. As I recall, the same was true for Shuamura's One Piece palettes as well, so that seems to be a running theme with their collaboration eye palettes for some reason. It contains 10 eyeshadows in total. The shades are just labeled M1 through M10 though, so I actually don't know really the exact breakdown of the different formulas within this palette. Usually in the past, they would label each eyeshadow by the initial of the eyeshadow formula followed by a number. But this time it seems like they just labeled each shade 1 through 10 and then put a letter designating the palette name in front. So the M in this instance stands for matcha. And similarly for the other palette, which is called Azuki Fouillette, the shades are labeled A1 through A10. I do know from the description on their official website that M2, M4, and M10 are in Chuamura's special crushed stone formulation. And then from my own conjecture, I can pretty much gather that M5 and M6 are the only pure mattes in the palette. M1, M7, and I think M9 too are like typical semi-sheer glimmery top coat formulations. I am not a fan of M1 or M7 at all, just to get that out of the way right now. I think those are definitely the weakest links, the weakest shades in the palette, and I couldn't get them to pick up on my finger when I was doing arm swatches for the life of me. Like, I actually ended up having to take a brush and poke at the M1 pan to lift up a few chunks so that I could actually spread it on my arm. I don't know if you can see, but there's like a little indentation crater in the pan here. It was just absolutely ridiculous. It was just absolutely ridiculous. M1 is a total fail in my book. I didn't use it in today's look, but I am telling you straight up right now that I just don't see how this shade could add any type of value to any look whatsoever. Yeah, and... Finally, M3 and M8. I'm just gonna call them satin finishes, I guess. These are the ones that have like pretty decently opaque base colors with a lot of small micro glitters and shimmers baked into the formula evenly throughout to give a more satiny, reflective finish, but not overly glittery or chunky. Now that I've given you a basic rundown of all the formulas in this palette, let's jump straight into the application. And I'll show you how I got this look that I'm rocking today. Okay, so I'm just gonna prime my eyes first with my ABH eye primer, as always. I usually apply eye primer with my fingers, but I'm gonna try it with the brush this time because I wanna make it look less harsh. Since this is quite a bright-looking eyeshadow base, it's not exactly white, but it's almost 
almost there so I want to make it look as blended as possible especially on the edges I feel like I don't do a really good job with my fingers in blending the edges all the way out so yeah okay so now that we're primed I'm gonna go into my little eyeshadow palette my heart is like beating right now you guys don't even understand take the little plastic protector thing out I think this is gonna be a relatively easy application actually because I already know what colors I definitely want to feature so I definitely want to use the green and the orange crushed stone shades and then I also want to use this beautiful M5 which is like a matte terracotta orangey shade as well as M8 let's see if we can get this bright jewel toned yellow in there as well this reminds me of like you know those crazy million dollar yellow canary engagement rings that were all the rage in like celebrity hip hop circles a while back that's what this shade reminds me of so this is going to be my first time ever dipping into these actual pans as you can see they are totally pristine and not swatched before so this is gonna be a true um, blind first impressions test if you will I mean in this video you'll probably already have seen my swatches and everything just because of the way that I edit and structured the video but as of this moment of the actual eyeshadow application I have not touched a thing but I'm feeling really good about this color story I'm gonna start off with this M3 shade right here which is like a shimmery what is this actually it's like a metallic really light subtle bronzy shade almost I'm gonna put it a little bit higher up in the upper half of my lid because I want this space down here to be reserved for those crushed stone shades but yeah so the first initial just gut feeling that I have looking at this color story the colors are so like gorgeous and cohesive that I pretty much trust this palette to come out looking good no matter what combination or technique I go for and generally that's a really good sign if I get that feeling as my initial gut reaction to a palette because not all eyeshadow palettes give me that feeling of confidence and security when I first glance at them then we're gonna go in with the crushed lime green I'm so excited for this one and I'm going to apply this on the inner half of my top lids this is doing that annoying thing where it's flaking off in these huge like chunks do you see that so I guess I'll just press this in with my finger now but I was hoping that yeah I was hoping that I could handle this with a brush the finger remains undefeated in eyeshadow application. What do you call this? Foiled eyeshadow application. That is a really gorgeous finish. I feel like some sort of reptilian hybrid lizard girl. Bitch, I'm fucking reptilian. Okay, let's replicate on the left eye. It kind of hurts my heart a little bit to already see such a deep scooped out portion of that shadow, but it's these crushed stone marbly shades you know what are you gonna do i hope the light is not too bright i hope you guys can actually see the lime green tint of this shadow it is pretty blinding and reflective though don't get me wrong like it's a really really um the gold and silver reflex in here are really strong but it still comes off overall like with a green tint okay now i'm going in with m4 and i guess we've given up on brushes at this point i am so sad because the beautiful you know marble design is never quite the same after that first swatch so that's why i put it off for so long to actually swatch through this entire palette it's because i knew i had to destroy the aesthetic of those pans and i wasn't ready for it emotionally okay I don't think I ever will be. Okay, now why is this one like doing that hard pan thing? Maybe I need to loosen it up with a brush first and then go in with my finger. Yeah, see, so you need to like poke it a little bit with a brush so that some of it lifts up and then you can... See how it comes off all chunky like that? I'm not sure how I feel about that. But for all the griping that I'm doing right now, this is actually a really beautiful formula. Once you actually finagle it to stick on your eye, it's like so wet looking and reflective wow this definitely surpasses any similar product that i've seen especially in the drugstore i'm thinking specifically of the misha glitter prism shadows which i have a video on and i kind of raved about them a little bit at the time but yeah this is definitely like a super amped up version of that oh my god i just can't get over how shiny liquid metally that looks Alright, let's move on. So I'm going to darken up the edges with M5. M5 and M6 are the only pure matte formulas in this palette. Close out my outer corners. Oh my god, wow. Cannot believe what I'm seeing in the monitor here. This is gorgeous. 
This is so freaking pigmented. I probably should have went in with a lighter hand because I feel like this is almost too intense. Do you see that? That is so bright. Amazing matte formulas, as always. Um, that came out a lot more orange than I was expecting. I thought it was going to be like a darker terracotta shade, but that's absolutely A-OK. -okay. I think it actually looks better this way. It looks like a neon summer fantasy drink or something. I trust Drew and Mara's vision more than my own. And like I said, I just trust this palette to not do me wrong. And then I'm going to take a smaller detail brush and use this jewel-toned jewel -toned yellow on the inner half of my lower lids. Again, I think I picked up too much because this one is pretty pigmented as well. This one is like a shimmer shade though. Is this shimmer or satin? I guess it would be more of a satin shade because that's what it looks like on the back of my hand. But there's like micro shimmers in there as well. I don't know if you can tell, it's very, very subtle but it looks really beautiful in person. So I pretty much hit all the colors that I set out to use today. Okay, I'm going to go off camera and finish up the rest of my eye makeup. I'll be back shortly to try on the lipstick with you guys, as well as give you my final thoughts on this collection. Okay, so this is the finished look. I also added just a tiny bit of blush and contour from the RMK Summer Collection. Just really subtle, natural shades on the rest of the face so that we can have the eyes be the focal point of attention. Now I am going in with the Mekon Ginger Rouge Unlimited Matte. And can we just take a minute to appreciate this packaging? I love this semi-transparent cube aesthetic. It is so satisfying. It is so satisfying. I don't know what it is. And it feels really nice too. It's like a really smooth plastic. So there's the lipstick shade, Mekon Ginger. Let's just give that a little swatch there on the back of my hand. Ooh, super pigmented and even. I'm trying to work on my lipstick application face. I feel like whenever I'm editing or looking back on the raw footage for these videos, I'm like, dear God, is that what I look like when I'm applying lipstick? Let's try to channel more uh, sexy vixen vibes. I'm less... I don't know, dying trout. So I think I put on more than enough there. You actually don't need more than one good swipe for it to pretty much um, cancel out your entire lip color. But you know me, I just have this compulsion to put on like 10 layers of lipstick. That is a really, really cute bright summery shade. Right up my alley, like my love for coral lipsticks of any shade. And I also noticed that it has a really nice little, it's really, really faint, but there is somewhat of a slight floral, almost herby scent to it. Hmm, ginger maybe, in keeping with the theme of the name. I'm not sure, but I do really like it. It's barely there though, so don't worry if you're really sensitive to fragrances in your cosmetics. You wouldn't even notice unless you put it right up to your nose like I'm doing right now, but yeah, that's really, really nice. I forgot how much I love Shuemura's Rouge Unlimited Matte Formula. It's really, really breathable on the lips, which I really appreciate. As someone who loves the aesthetic of a matte lipstick finish, but more often than not, I can't stand the way that most matte formulas feel on top of my lips. This formula is definitely one of the best, if not the best option out there. But yeah, so that's the final look. I think it looks super cute and refreshing. This makeup is really making me crave some sort of a decadent citrusy drink or a fruit tart or something like that. I just, I need something fruity and citrusy in my life right now. And I can't have it because I'm too lazy to go outside to the combi. Let me give you a close up of the eyeshadow. Do you love it as much as I do? I'm pretty obsessed actually. So I am back here for my final thoughts. I'm gonna try and keep this brief and concise because a girl's gotta sleep. Lipstick is 10 out of 10. Let's just get that out of the way. I don't think I need to elaborate on that. I've always loved the Rouge Unlimited Matte Formula. It's probably my favorite matte formula of all time, come to think of it. I just don't own that many because these are expensive, you know, or else I would have picked up the whole range by now. I mean, but this time around in particular, the packaging, the shade, the formula, it was all perfection. As for the eye palette, I personally really liked this eye palette despite the one or two duds. We already established that these two shades are trash. I don't even want to dwell on it, but overall, I really do like this color story. I like how it's basically a really wearable and intuitive neon palette. At first glance, it may be like, whoa, you know, so loud. Whoa. 
Once you start playing around with it, it's not intimidating at all. I actually think it's great for beginners who are new to neons or bright colors. I really got the sense throughout my own application as well today that I probably could have just closed my eyes and dipped my fingers or dipped my brushes into a couple of random pans. And no matter what colors or placement of colors I came up with, it was bound to look good. Like it's pretty foolproof in that way in my opinion. There's a perfect blend of neutral and brighter colors as well as a good mixture of different textures and formulas. Ultimately, I feel like this palette was way more my cup of tea than the One Piece collaboration palette they released earlier this year. I'll link my review for that up in the cards if you missed that one. Once again, I think it all comes down to personal preference, so don't take my word as the end-all be-all, obviously. If you love that one, that's great too. But for me, I just felt like the color story in the One Piece palette being a little edgier, a little more rock and roll, I just felt like the idiosyncrasies of the Shuemura eyeshadow formulas in general, like the fact that they are all pretty much designed to blend seamlessly into each other, or the way that a lot of their shimmers tend to be really sheer and basically only function as a top coat. All of which are good things by the way, like this is what makes Shuomura's eyeshadows stand out from the rest, right? But I just felt like in that particular case with the bolder, darker color story, it would have been nice if the formulas were bolder as well. Like I found myself wanting to create a more color blocked or just more sharply contrasting look with the turquoise and gold and all the dramatic colors in that palette, but I couldn't quite achieve it with Shu's formula. Whereas with this palette, I think the whole citrusy, summery feel of the color story and concept from the jump is already like perfectly matched with Shuemura's, you know, watercolory diffused eyeshadow style in general, if that makes sense. So that's why for me personally, the Sada Haru Aoki palette definitely scored higher points than the One Piece release. And the reason why I picked the matcha palette over the Azuki one, well first of all I love lime green, right? Like I just love the uniqueness of this palette and the overall, you know, citrusy, fruity feel of this one. And the Azuki Fuelet, I felt like it was just not as special. Like the reddish brown theme of that one has already been done many times over, not just by Shuemura but by many other brands as well. It's already similar to one of Shuemura's existing chromatic palettes, which actually also has Azuki in the name. That one is called Azuki Flush and this one is Azuki Fuilet. Shade-wise too, the only difference is that the Azuki Flush palette doesn't have the special crushed stone formulations. And also, I thought that this was kind of weird, but for the matcha palette, 9 out of the 10 shadows in here are limited edition ones exclusive to this launch, with the exception of M8, which is this canary yellow down here. But for the Azuki Fuilet, only 7 out of 10 are exclusive shades. So yeah, I'm not sure why they didn't make it consistent with both palettes, but whatever, it's not a big deal. The point is, they're both priced the same at 9,350 yen, right? So, so like, why would you not get the one with the most limited edition colors? Or is that just me and my hype be self? Now, unfortunately, I do have to mention some cons, you know, after the initial infatuation with the packaging wore off. Well, first of all, let me not forget to mention that the packaging is absolutely beautiful. The green cover is actually a fabric, almost cushiony material. Of course, this is terrifying to me in the sense that that means it's really, really prone to getting dirty. Unlike a plastic or even cardboard covering, if I get one drop of foundation on here, that's never coming out no matter how hard I scrub, right? And even though it's already covered in like glitter particles, despite my best attempts to use it cleanly. So yeah, that is definitely a terrifying prospect, but still, I can't deny how gorgeous and unique the packaging for this is. One thing that I also really like is that the cover bends back all the way like this. I mean, you can use the mirror in here, obviously, if you want, but I'd rather just hold it like this and use my bathroom mirror or something if I'm using this in an everyday capacity. I do have to say that I was taken aback by how tiny this palette is. Look at this, my one hand, fits completely around the palette. And I have pretty small hands, so that's saying something. Another thing I noticed immediately upon first sight is that the eyeshadow pans in this palette are definitely smaller than their regular eyeshadow singles. And sure enough, when I looked it up, I found that their regular singles contain 1.4 grams of product in each pan, while these only contain one gram of product. It even says right here on the box, 1.0 grams times 10. I find that to be a huge differential, actually. So one of these pans is only two-thirds the size of a regular full-sized you know eyeshadow from the brand that doesn't really make much sense to me I wouldn't mind so much if it wasn't so so expensive you know because I'm not opposed to the general idea of a smaller slimmer travel friendly compact but yeah I think for 9,350 yen though we deserve at the very least 
full-sized eyeshadow pans. I mean, come on. So I do have to say that that was ultimately disappointing. On the bright side though, the slim, compact size of the palette does make it great for traveling, and you're more likely to hit pan quicker, which everyone likes, right? Alright, so that is it for my first impressions of the Shuamura and Sadaharu Aoki makeup collection. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!